My name is Derek Whitaker. I'm an ecologist with Park Canada. Just getting ready to head out for a day of ecosystem monitoring in Torngat Mountains National Park. Our pilot Kyle is getting the helicopter ready behind us. We're leaving here from Torngat Mountains Base Camp and Research Station, which is our base of operations when we're doing field work in the park. A lot of the work we do in Torngat Mountains National Park has been focused on climate change and the effects of climate change on ecosystems and the environment in the park. And one of the things we're seeing happen is what we call shrubification. It's happening all across the Canadian Arctic, but essentially tundra ecosystems converting to more of a shrub type ecosystem. On this hillside here in Nakbok Brook, you can see the green growing up the valley sides. That's one of the consequences we're seeing is that the, the greening of the tundra, the greening of the Arctic, is leading to an increase in expansion of vegetation up into the higher elevations. I'm a bird biologist. That's my academic background. So everywhere I go, I carry my binoculars with me. And basically every bird I've seen, I write down a note on what species it is, how many are there, and whether there's any breeding evidence. So at the same time as we're seeing shrubs changing in this national park, we're seeing the bird communities respond. We have a lot of information to suggest that species should be shifting their ranges northward as global warming proceeds. And I've actually seen that with some of the data I've got here. Some of the observations show that a whole group of boreal bird species are starting to colonize the Torngat Mountains. This is exactly the kind of habitat that a lot of the boreal birds that are expanding in the National Park are using. They're moving into these areas, these thickets. This is actually an interesting site because we have some historical photos of this location from a camp that was here in 1990. These things are alders. They're about uh, two meters tall now. These weren't here 30 years ago. So Holly's measuring the heights of the dwarf birch in one of our plots here. We'll do five of these plots at each site. Four. Yeah. Uh -huh. done here and we'll go on to the next one. So we're here at Arama Bay in Torngat Mountains National Park. This is our last day of real field work for 2021. It's been a pretty successful year, although a little bit more damage than usual to some of our monitoring equipment. We're just downloading a few last uh, air temperature and soil temperature loggers and doing some repairs. What's the story? So it should be fine. We just need to put a new bracket on it. Okay. So we're all finished at Rama Bay for uh, this year. We've got a slightly taller post installed, jury rigged with the parts that we had available to us today. My fingers crossed for 2022 that the bears can't reach our air temperature logger on top and pull it down. So it's August 13th, our last day in Torngat Mountains Base Camp Research Station. We're just heading out to visit a research site from the doctoral research of Dr. Laura Seward Collier, who works for Parks Canada. She's here behind me. And we're going out to visit some OTCs, or open top chambers. So these are uh, simulate climate change and effects on tundra plants. And we're gonna see how they're doing several years after they're put out here. So what it does, wind so that you have less heat loss uh, for the ground vegetation and it's been shown that these greenhouses increase temperature by about one degree celsius and compared to places where they don't have a greenhouse the vegetation are growing taller they're shrubbier there's there's just generally more plant biomass inside these little greenhouses when compared to our outside plot. Mm -hmm. 